Hello, this is Yuri and welcome to the video on parametric exponential models. A good understanding of Kaplan-Meier method is a prerequisite for this video, but since you are here, I suppose you are already familiar with it. If not, check out my video, a gentle introduction into Kaplan-Meier curves. Why do we need parametric models at all if we already have Kaplan-Meier method? Uh, well, the main disadvantage of the non-parametric Kaplan-Meier method is that it cannot describe survival probability by any smooth function, which means it cannot predict anything. The parametric models, for example exponential or Weibull model, can. Moreover, parametric models are the logical step on the way from the Kaplan-Meier to the semi-parametric Cox models, because they beautifully connect the dots between Kaplan-Meier and Cox. And thus they greatly improve understanding of survival analysis. Besides, in case where parametric models are appropriate, they are more exact, more effective and more informative than Kaplan-Meier or Cox. However, unfortunately, this step is often left out due to the rare use of parametric models. In this video, we'll try to close this gap. So, how can we describe survival with a smooth function? To answer this question, let's first describe a not survival, also known as death. I would describe death with two things the event of death itself and the particular time point at which death happens. These two things always describe a single event, because one only dies once. However, if several people die, they will not die at the exact same moment, right? Thus, the time of death would vary, which would make the time itself a variable. And the number of deaths would grow over time, which becomes a rate of death, or simply, to call it in statistical jargon, a hazard where a hazard is a probability of dying now. If we think about every event of death as a data point on a plot, we could show the rate of death. In this case, we have a pretty stable rate of death. For example, one person dies every day, which is already a linear relationship, because we can predict hazard by time. And since every relationship can be described with a formula, we can do it here too by simply multiplying hazard with time. Hazard and time in this formula are actually two parameters, which makes this formula a parametric model. Remember, the Kaplan-Meier method cannot be described by a formula and is therefore non-parametric. So f of t is a function of hazard over time, or since the hazard is a probability of dying, we can see f of t as a failed survival. By the way, what is happening for the survival? If the hazard to die would steadily grow with the same rate, then the probability of survival would steadily decrease at the same rate. Thus, hazard and survival can be expressed in terms of each other. Particularly, the hazard of dying over time can be seen as a failed survival, f of t in the left formula, or the survival over time, s of t in the right formula, can be seen as a hazard of not dying, or simply a negative hazard, which mathematically can be expressed as a minus sign in front of the hazard. Both functions result in straight lines, where hazard steadily increases and survival steadily decreases. Such steady increase uh, or decrease in hazard or survival are rather not natural or not realistic. It's kind of hard to plan and monitor death, except you are a serial killer, which I hope you are not, since you are watching this video. The hazard usually either exponentially increases for example, in the case of hunger, if resources are depleted, or exponentially declines. For example, in the case of the pandemic, after an effective vaccine was found. Thus, let's have a look at these both exponential changes. Think about hunger for a moment. It accumulates, right? And the longer we stay hungry, the higher is the probability that we die. The plot shows such a development 
where a hazard of dying, f of t, expressed in probabilities, is small in the beginning, meaning just a few deaths, but grows exponentially with time, which results in more and more death. I like to call such a trend a positive or accelerating exponential change. So, the only thing we need to change in the formula above in order to plot such a trend is to add an exponential term in front of the hazard. Again, since survival can be seen as a negative hazard, we can express the survival S of t by simply using a minus sign in front of the left formula. This plot displays the results of such survival function. It's kind of obvious that if the hazard of dying is low in the beginning of time, then the probability of survival is high. And at the end of time, survival exponentially drops due to exponential increase of the hazard. However, in some cases, more people die at the beginning of time. And after it, the rate of death declines over time. Think about the pandemic or a Titanic crash. The change is still exponential and it goes in the same direction up in the case of the hazard and down in the case of survival. However, the exponential change is kind of turned inside out. I like to call it a negative or decelerating exponential change. Such inside out bending can be achieved by a minus sign in front of both a hazard and the exponential function itself in the left equation. These two minuses do not change the hazard in the survival probability like on the previous slide. They only change the curve from accelerating to decelerating. Now, in order to get survival for this function, we also, as in the previous slide, have to use a minus in front of the whole exponential hazard expression. Interestingly, two minuses in front of the exponential function in the survival formula neutralize each other and become a plus, which leaves us with a negative exponential function. Does it look familiar to you? Well, now we finally have our smooth function we wanted to describe in the beginning of the video, where negative hazard and time are the two parameters which describe our exponential change in survival probability, which is why such models do have their name, parametric exponential models. And since the hazard is negative and the exponential function is not linear, aka curvy, our model produces a negative exponential curve. Such smooth rate of decrease describes survival probability much better than the Kaplan-Meier method, which abruptly or stepwisely drops probability only after an event while keeping the probability constant between the events. Let's plot our real smooth exponential model on top of the non-smooth Kaplan-Meier step function with the help of computer. Here is a code example in R, but you can use programming language of your choice. The green box shows how to code exponential models in R, while below you see the code for a Weibull model in case you need it. Last big chunk of code below is a visualization of the model results, which finally gives us a smooth parametric exponential model. The parameters of the curve allow us to model and predict survival and hazard over time, which is the main advantage of exponential models over the non-parametric and therefore not modelable Kaplan-Meier method. However, the non-linearity is often troublesome and would rather use a linear regression concept which summarizes or regresses a lot of numbers into few numbers like the intercept and the slope. Fortunately, a non-linear curve can be easily linearized by a natural logarithm. For this, we don't even have to understand how logarithm or the exponential function work. We only need to know that they neutralize each other similarly to two minuses. Actually, using logarithms produces three positive side effects. First, 
On the right side of the equation, a logarithm would transfer our curve into a line, where we will be able to have an intercept A and a slope B as in a usual linear logistic regression. Secondly, it will help us to connect to further parametric models if we need, for example, Weibull and Cox models, because the difference between them lies mainly in the intercept A. And finally, it will greatly increase the interpretability, because the hazard ratios, that's what the exponential models deliver, can be interpreted exactly like the odds ratios from the usual logistic regression. Similarly to the odds in the logistic regression, the hazard itself, which is the probability of dying now, is less useful than the hazard ratio. So, in the end, are parametric models useful at all? And the answer is, of course. If a suitable distribution can be found, a parametric model is a better fit, more efficient and more precise than Kaplan-Meier or Cox models. Parametric models are also more informative, which means they can predict survival probabilities, hazard ratios, mean or median survival times. The other question is, are parametric models perfect? And the answer is, of course not. And the first disadvantage of parametric models is that they need to specify the distribution, which may be pretty difficult to identify. Secondly, they are also mathematically more complex than Kaplan-Meier method, and are therefore less popular, which is greatly decreasing comparability of results among studies. Thus, despite the fact that parametric models are a good alternative to the Kaplan-Meier and Cox regression models, which both do not need to specify any distribution, Kaplan-Meier and Cox remain the most popular methods for analyzing survival data. And that is why the next logical step in your statistical journey would be learning about Cox proportional hazard models. For more details and computer code for Kaplan-Meier and exponential parametric models, check the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for learning.